<clears throat> All right, everybody, let's take a look at the structure of an argument. So when we talk about an argument, uh, what we're really trying to talk about, what we're really talking about is like the point you're trying to make and then how you're trying to make it, okay? So that's what we're really focused on here. Uh, we'll start with our learning targets, uh, the evaluate the effectiveness of an argument. When you look at it, say, did this work or not and why? Uh, what made it effective? What kept it from being effective? Um, look for those characteristics and elements of an argument um, in an argument text, and we'll be doing that with the Declaration of Independence. And then also, because this is like such an important piece of American history, it's also this idea that we're looking at some of those founding documents as well. Um, when we think about um, the elements of argument, so an argument is, like I said, the point that you're trying to make. This is the thing you're trying to get people to buy into, right? It's the your stand on an issue. Uh, the example I always use in here is, you know, what that Los Bravos has the best cheese dip in Evansville, right? That's my argument. That is the argument, okay? So when we think about the structure, we're really thinking about what is it about the presentation of that argument that makes it effective? What is it about the way that I put it together uh, the structure, the organization, uh, the way that I bring the audience through the argument that makes it effective and helps the audience see my point and buy into it better. There are several elements of the argument, uh, and these are the things that we really want to focus on. First off is the hook. This is the thing that gets people interested in the topic and in the problem that you are addressing, right? Um, this is how you make it real for the audience. It's an interesting way. It's a, it's a way to make it relatable. It's a way that they can see it and it becomes real for them, right? It hooks them. It gets them engaged. It gets them excited. It gets them looking at this topic. And then it's the arguable thesis. Now, the arguable thesis, what that means is that you are presenting a argument, a position that is to a reasonable person people can make a point of, agree with, disagree with, argue, debate, right? Now, let's, let's be careful what that really means, okay? So an arguable thesis means it ha it's something that can be debated. So it can't be something like breathing is good, okay? Because humans have to breathe, right? Like that's just who and what we are. It has to, we have to do that. Now, you can argue like breathing, you know, uh, you know, polluted air is not healthy or, you know, uh, country living is the air is cleaner and that's a healthier breathing. OK, yeah, you can argue that. Right. But we can't argue the breathing because there's no opposite. Right. A good argument is something that there is a logical, reasonable opposite position or different positions, plural, that a person could take. So it has to be something that reasonable people can agree to disagree on. I think also, too, when it comes to the idea of arguable thesis, it's something that you're trying to get your audience to buy into, right? Like you're trying to move the needle. You're trying to get people to change their mind. You're actively trying to persuade. If you just says Los Bravo has good cheese dip. OK, what you're just saying is like, hey, there's a restaurant and they have this cheese dip and it's good. You're trying if you're trying to say this is the best cheese dip uh, that you will find anywhere in Evansville. Now we're starting to talk about like, OK, well, I kind of like this one or I kind of like that one. Right. But, well, that's arguable. If it's a statement of fact, it cannot be arguable. Then we get into the concessions, refusions and rebuttals. And what does that mean? So you have to be willing to accept other positions. For you to have an arguable position, reasonable people have to think it's okay to have a different position, right? But you have to understand that people are coming to your argument with different ideas, with different expectations, with different ideas on the solution or the position or the topic or the whatever. And so you have to understand that coming in and you have to be willing to con concess a few things, right? Like you have to be willing to give up a position. You know, and say, like, okay, I know that some people like Hacienda cheese dip, but let's talk about why it's not so good. Or the rebuttal, like, you know, um, you know, what about BW3s, right? B-dubs, they have cheese dip. Well, it's a different kind of cheese dip. It's not like Mexican. It's not, you know, spicy like that. It's not that jalapeno, creamy, 
dip for chips. And, and so what you're doing is you're coming into the argument, understanding what other people might say and being willing to understand what that is, understand how I might accept a little bit, but I'm really trying to get people to go over here to this other point. And it's understanding what those other positions are and why they're not really good, solid choices for you. Uh, the support, that is the information you are providing to prove your point. So, for instance, you give reasons, you give rationale. Well, Los Bravos has the best cheese dip because it's spicy, it's creamy, it sticks to the chip, it's cheap. They bring a lot of it out at one time. You give us reasons, you give us support. You bring in the cheese dip and say, hey, here, I take a taste. Prove to me that this isn't the best, right? Support is all of those things that we can use to back up our claim. Now, sometimes you'll hear this called warrants, uh, and this is reasons to believe the information that I'm providing. And then finally, we have the convincing conclusion. And the convincing conclusion is it, re it restates our, our main point, right? It really brings that point back home. It summarizes that main point, the, the main ideas that we've had, and it really just kind of seals the deal. It just sells the deal to the audience and proves to them that this was a good, possible, logical, probable, possible solution to that problem. Anyway, as you are thinking about the structure of argument, uh, and we'll be looking at different arguments, including the Declaration of Independence first, the key to this is you start with here's the argument that they're making, making that determination whether it was effective or not, and then as you talk about the why, you start to talk about like, well, they didn't rebut, or they didn't really have any kind of good support, or they didn't whatever, right? And you start talking about why it did or why it did not come across effectively as it could.